So in this video, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about building your React application and deploying your React application. Building your React application means that we are taking our assets that we have developed, so that's the stuff that we have written in SRC, and turning it into optimized and compiled builds. So remember, we are writing our code using JSX, which is non-JavaScript syntax. Browsers won't understand it. So we have to have this compile step to translate this code from JSX to regular JavaScript. And in the process, we also optimize things. We can uh, strip away white space from files to make them smaller. We can optimize images, um, et cetera. So that's building. And then deploying means we're going to take those assets that we just built and put them on a server so someone else can access our project. So let's do a build. Inside of package.json, we have been running the start command. We want to run this build command. So npm run build will kick off this build command. It'll take a second because it is compiling all of our SRC into this build folder. And when it's done, it will tell us, you know, either compiled successfully or unsuccessfully. Um, here we can see all the files that it built and their sizes. And it's giving us a little command that we can run to actually serve this build folder and check it out on a local server. So I recommend checking out the create a production build page under create react app, which explains what those files are and why they have this hash in them. But a quick overview is that our main.hash.chunk.js, that's the application code that we wrote. And then there are additional JS files um, that have been code split, like some of the node modules may end up in number.hash.chunk.js. So once we've got this build folder and we can see our assets, like here's our index.html file and here's our static folder with the images, the JavaScript, the CSS. Uh, once we've got this, we can actually run it against a, a local server and we're going to use this serve command. So serve is this package published by uh, Vercel and that's the company we're going to use for hosting our application. Um, serve allows you to take a static a uh, single page application or static files and host them locally on your machine under a local server. It's a command line tool and you can see some of the information on usage and installation here. So I am going to flip back. I want to npm install dash dash global serve. And we've used npm install before to install packages into our package.json. When we use dash dash global, we're saying make this package globally available. So serve as a command line tool. So once we install it globally, that means from any command line, we'll be able to use it. So for instance, I can do serve dash dash help to get information on this serve command line software. Like how are, how can I use it? And it's like telling us here that we can say serve and then the name of the folder we want to serve. And it's giving us options for how we can configure that server. And one of them that Create React, is, Create React App is telling us to use is dash S. And we'll talk about why in a second. But let's just serve our build. And this needs to be run from the root of our project. So here I'm in Create React App quiz game dash three. And my build is one directory down from that. So I can say serve build. And now I have my project on localhost 5000 here. And this is, these are the production assets that I am now interacting with, as opposed to when we ran it locally, we were working with the development assets. So you may occasionally reveal some bugs by opening up your production build in a local server and um, testing your features. So it's good to go through that process before you actually do a deploy. One thing I wanted to point out here is that our build has an index.html file. It does not have an about.html file for say our about page. So when I go to this URL in the local development server, um, if I go there from the home page to about, that's fine. But if I open up a new tab and try to get to about, I'm going to get a 404 because there is no about.html file. We have built a single page application, which means that there is one HTML file and everything else is loaded 
by uh, React, changing the contents of the page. So what that means is that if I want to um, configure my server, I can use the dash S option to say, take all requests that come in and send them to index.html. So now if I do this and go to slash about, it routes this request to index.html and then React can take care of rendering our about page. The reason why I'm pointing that out is because that influences the deployment process. So if you just take these assets and maybe you know how to use FTP, file transfer protocol, and you have a server that you have already purchased and a domain, and you just copy this folder and throw it up there, you're gonna run into that problem that no one can go to sub pages within your application um, directly. They have to go to the home page and then click their way to the desired like sub page that you have within your application. So when you want to go deploy your project, you want to either reconfigure project so that you don't have these sub pages, or you want to use a service that is configured to basically do what we just did here of route all requests to your index.html file. So let me kill this and let's check out our browser again. Close these down. There's a deployment page in the React uh, documentation, which talks about a lot of different options for how you can um, host your project. So it goes through how to use AWS, Azure, Firebase, GitHub Pages, Heroku, Nellify, Zite Now, etc. So a lot of different services that you can um, host your project on. I like GitHub Pages a lot for static sites, but you, you do have to make some configuration changes that it goes through here for deploying to GitHub Pages. Um, and GitHub Pages is free, and since you've already got a GitHub account, uh, you could follow these instructions and, and get your project set up. But I want to show you uh, Zite Now, which has been renamed, the company is now called Vercel. Uh, so these commands are a little out of date, but it is a really easy hosting platform and you get free hosting with your, uh, when, you create up an, when you create an account. And Vercel knows how to um, set up create React app projects so that they all requests are redirected to index.html. So it's perfect for us. Um, Vercel is it's specifically a cloud platform for static sites and serverless functions. Um, we're building static sites in this class. So you want to go to vercel.com, sign up for an account, and then we are going to flip back to our terminal here, and we are going to install the Vercel command line tool. So npm i vercel dash dash global or dash G if you want the short flag. This will install it globally, so we'll be able to open up any terminal and run Vercel. And what you want to do is run Vercel login first, which will, you enter your email address, it'll send you an email to confirm your login. So go through that. I've already logged in here, so I'm not going to demo that. Um, what I want to do now is run Vercel without any arguments after it which is the command for deploying. So here it's asking me if I want to set up and deploy and I want to make sure that I'm at the root of my React project. So React Quiz Game 3, I'm in the same location where my package.json is. I'll say yes. Uh, scope, you'll only have one under your new account, so it's fine to just pick that. Link to an existing project, no, I want to create a new project. It'll ask me what my project name is, so I'm going to say React Quiz Game and the directory in which the code is located is my current directory. That's what dot slash means. So I'm going to leave that as the default. It's going to set up the project. And because uh, Vercel does some intelligent checking of your project to see if it fits certain templates, templates, it's recognized that this is create react app. So it has recognized our build command, npm run build, and it knows that the built files are in um, this build folder. So I can leave these. I can say no to not override. It's going to start deploying which is going to create two uh, files in our project, or it's gonna create a folder and it's going to modify our git ignore. So in this folder, um, which you wanna keep in here, but don't want in your git history, uh, this configures your organization and project ID. So Vercel, when you do another deploy, it knows where it's putting this project. And it also modifies your git ignore to say, okay, make sure that that folder doesn't end up in the history. So this will take a little while to build and I can actually inspect it as it's building by clicking this link. 
and I can see the log of it building. So here it uh, installed the dependencies, so it ran yarn install, which is similar to npm install, uh, and then it ran build. So we can see React scripts build running here, and we can see the output from that. When it um, builds, we can check out the source tab here to see what are the source files in the project. So we can see our package, our source, our public folder. And then in the output, we can see our build folder. So we can see that index, we can see the static files that were built. And if we come back to overview, we can check out this deployment by clicking visit. So now we're at this link that has our name of our project with a unique hash.vercel.app. And this is all set up so that if I were to go to a specific route within our application, like slash about, it knows to redirect that to our index.html. So this is a pretty nice hosting platform for that reason. So a couple things to note about this. Um, if I am on my Vercel dashboard, or so if I have my deployment page pulled up and I click on React Quiz Game, this is my page for my application. It tells me what the latest deployment was, and it also shows me the production URL, uh, which has the same structure as our previous one. It just doesn't have that unique hash in it. So the idea with Vercel is that we can have both a development deployment, um, which is something that we can send to like test out features, but not necessarily push live, to users who would go to the production URL, which doesn't have that hash in it. So when you run your Vercel command, it is gonna create a new dev deployment. Um, so let me make a change and redeploy. So here, I'm gonna to go to my play page and say starting the game. I'm gonna run Vercel again. I get a new unique hash here. So if I open this up, I can watch it deploying. And this is gonna be separate from my previous deploy, which I can um, click here to pull this up. So here's the previous one, it's DRUB. Here's my new one, PW47. So I'll be able to look at both versions of this application um, in the browser. So let's see if this one is finished yet. So I'm gonna let this one run for a second or two and pause the video. Okay, so this one finished deploying, so I can check this out, which has this hash at, at the um, in the URL. And if I go to play, I can see starting the game, but I can also check out my previous deployment still. So I can visit the this different hash and see start the game. So for each deployment, I'll have a unique hash that I can check out and see that version of the application. And um, this is gonna be separate if I go back here to my main domain, my production deployment here. Um, this is still gonna have that first thing that we pushed. So the first time we make a deploy, uh, we're both gonna have that development link and it'll be updating our production deployment, which is the one without that hash. And then anytime we decide like, oh, we've tested enough features, we've made these um, production deploys, we verify that it works. We want to push this live to our main URL here, to our production. We run Vercel dash dash prod. And this will create a new production build. So it's gonna make another deploy, um, but push it to our main URL here. So if I refresh the page, we can see starting the game is now showing up. So that's mostly it to using Vercel. I wanna show you a couple of things um, that you can access in your dashboard. So under deployments, you can see all of the deployments you've made. Under settings, you can configure some of the um, build commands and the preset for the framework. There are a whole bunch of options in here for different frameworks that are popular. Um, you can set up environment variables. So these are things like API keys that you don't want in your source code. Um, so they're, you're often store them in the environment variables so you can pull them in um, to your application without revealing those in your source code. Uh, in advanced, you can delete your project should you want to. And then also there are integrations that you can set up for uh, GitHub. So for instance, you can set up a branch that will be your development 
um, branch. So as you push to that, it will automatically give you a new development URL that you can check out. And you can also configure production branches. So anytime you push to your main branch, that will trigger a production deployment. So that would push things to that URL without the hash. So that's all you need to know to get started with making builds, serving them, and then eventually deploying them to a service like Vercel. The process that you want to work through for your project is develop your features using npm run start, so using that development ser uh, server, um, make sure they work there, and then you can go ahead and make a build and deploy a build um, and share that project with other folks.